What is up everyone, it's your boy Jsemp and we're back here with another art video today. Today, we're gonna do something a little different. You know, I've just been cooped up here in quarantine, wanting to do something a little crazy. Today I've decided to paint directly on my Mac computer to deck it out. I've already done this before, but it was just with markers and this was a couple years ago. And so I was thinking that it is time to update what my computer looks like. So this is what my computer looks like now. And this is directly on the computer. I do have like a case protector so it doesn't get scratched up. And proof that this is just not a random broken computer. Um, see, it turns on and it's my computer that I use for school. So let's get started. So the first thing that we're gonna be doing is removing this top part. And then we're gonna tape it up. Nice, fresh, white paint. Big brushes are expensive, big brushes are hard to come by. And so, my trick if I'm trying to cover a large surface is, I don't like to use my hands, not because I don't like to get them dirty, but because it's not really an even, you know, setting, right? You have all these different curves and whatever. Just grab a paper towel and make it act like a large brush. And what you'll do is you put some paint down on your surface or on the paper towel and just brush in the same direction. This is now done. I'm just gonna let this sit and let this dry. And when it is all nice and dry, I'm gonna peel off the tape and we can get started with what we're gonna draw, which I have absolutely no clue what we're gonna do and I'm totally gonna wing it because I think that's the most fun part, especially when you're doing it on an item of high value. This is now fully dried. And so we're gonna do the satisfying part of peeling off the tape. And you're probably like, why are you peeling it off now? Well, I'm not actually gonna be using paints for the rest of this. It's just gonna be markers. So I don't need to worry about any crazy stuff getting into the computer. So I want to, I like, you know, I like to do portraits. I think I, I kind of want to go on the theme of what I had last time. Think of doing a portrait, maybe add an apple. Um, you can see some color here. That's just the color from the previous design seeping through, which I don't mind much. But we're going to start by doing a, I'm thinking more of like a profile of a face. And I want it to have like, I think I'm going to do a female. I want her to have some wavy hair. We're gonna start just drawing. I'm thinking of giving her some pink hair. So while I'm doing this, I'm kind of, I'm going on, I'm winging it. So as I'm doing this, I'm thinking about what colors I wanna add, what colors I wanna do. You get to see my process. I've learned a lot, not by tutorials, but by just watching time lapses of other artists, see how they go about doing different things and what their process is. We're gonna go for some bold colors. Do these work? Ho oh, ho. Ooh, I can blend. Oh, I'm gonna blend with these. Ooh, we're gonna make this all highlighter colors. Done deal. Again, you get to see my weird creative process. Outline you. See, blending it. We'll mix and match some time lapse with some not time lapse. If you catch my drift, it's okay if it's a little messy. Just adds to the character. Yeah, this is a really interesting technique. One that I probably wouldn't have discovered unless I would have used this exact medium. So you're keeping the kind of graphic design with the unnecessary but bold outlines. Pink hair, how do we want this to work? Well, definitely the edge of the head is going to be pink. Yeah, I like the idea of having it flowing. Hair is going to be contoured to the shape of a sphere. You never want to draw directly down. I might color this, the background black, so I don't have to worry about doing the outside lines. So basically a highlight, a highlight in a hair can be achieved by having pure color and then having a bit of a white line, a white gap in between, but making sure that white gap has um, different spots where there is overlap. Maybe we'll add something over here. Or we'll just keep it with the weird shaped head because it's a weird creature. I do like the idea of like a darker horn. So maybe outline this. While we're at it, we'll add some, some details. With the eyelashes, 
This is a tough medium to work with, but it's worth it. This is looking very trippy. This is very trippy so far. I like it. I like trippy. I kind of want to make this very uh, retro. You know what this reminds me of? I know it's opposite colors, but that one character from Blade Runner, the new Blade Runner, where it's like the giant woman. I really like, okay, I like those vibes. I kind of want to go for those vibes. Also, bear with me with the editing of this video because I'm not exactly sure the, the content or like the, the format that I want to do these videos in yet. Um, like the non-tutorial based ones. But I think I'm doing, I think I'm doing a mighty fine job. Oh, that's clean. 2017. Oh, yeet. I might write my name in graffiti here. We're just going to go for it. We're going to do it like this. This is my graffiti process. And you block it in. I've never done graffiti vertically before. Bear with me here. I still think it's sick though. This is turning out weird and cool. I like it. I like it. I like it. When I started this, I had not no intention of it turning out like this. But it did, because that's how art be when it comes to me. I just start things without thinking, and then it turns into something cool. Wasn't expecting it to take that turn. That means I might do a bold black outline on this actually. What I want to do is I want to add pink outline. Makes it pop and it ties it in. See, when you have different elements within a piece that are drastically different, like graffiti and a portrait, you want to find ways to be able to tie them into each other, especially if they're not interacting with each other. Sometimes you'll have a portrait over graffiti or incorporated within graffiti. But if they're not interacting, you want to find ways um, such as color um, to make it into a cohesive piece because you don't want a piece to feel like it's a hodgepodge of a bunch of different things that don't go together. I painted over this, so I had to give it some time to dry. And it's because I kind of want to draw this as the Apple logo, but I don't want to draw it realistic colors. I wanted to do, I want to do it in like this highlighter color. So I think this here would be a good spot for it. it doesn't need to be perfect. Then we'll draw a realistic stem because that's what these are attached to. Oh, but it kind of dries. We could layer it. We'll see if layering it helps at all. What we're gonna do is pull this hair down so that we can outline it with black because I want this to match this. And so, okay, we're gonna use we're gonna use this black copic for now. This is the final final stage of this entire thing. So I'm pretty excited. Ooh, this is gonna make it all come together so nicely. I want this to be more graphic designy. A little bit of and we went for it. I like the strokes that you can get with this this copic marker. Just adding these faded dots to tie it more into everything else. Makes, gives the hair more depth, more texture. Cause I like the pure black there. I'm just gonna make this pure black. It will go more with the graphic design flow. You should keep in mind is when you're working with no plan in mind, inevitably you will make some sort of mistake or not like something. But the goal is to work it from different angles to not try to fix it, but try to find ways or spark an idea on how to exactly make that better. With graffiti, sometimes you'll add a heavier line weight on one end to give it a 3D effect. And I often do that, but didn't really want to do that here since everything's getting outlined and it just didn't make sense to have everything have that effect because I wouldn't want to just do it on one thing. Ooh, okay, I just got to finish dotting this and then I think we are done. We have done it. We have done it. We have done it. Here it is in its final form. You guys just saw the little montage that I made of it. So this is what it looks like when I open up my laptop. Chew. It's pretty cool. Laptop still works. I'm really happy with the design. Kind of went into it not knowing exactly what I was gonna do or really at all. Then I had a little bit of an idea. And then as I went along, the idea kind of grew. And um, I'm really happy that you guys got to see that process. I really do hope you enjoyed the video. If you're not already, feel free to subscribe. If you're feeling kind today, gently tap that like button. And as always, thanks for watching.